we're here in our pajamas because what better way to film a Q&A video than in our pajamas? So we didn't want to do a Q&A video, which we haven't done in a long time, as our first video back for my maternity leave of videos, which is really exciting. So you guys had some amazing questions between my Instagram and here on the YouTube community section. So we're just gonna go through, we chose like 12 of them. We're gonna do 12 questions in 12 minutes is our goal. We'll see if it happens. I thought we were doing 10 questions in 10 minutes. Oh, well, maybe we'll cut some. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> How many kids do you guys plan to have? If it were up to me, four children, at least four. That's something I've always wanted. I'm the oldest of five. I loved having siblings. That said, I feel like you have to have them one at a time, so. Yeah. We will see. Are you and James open to homeschooling Natalie and any other kids? So we actually were both homeschooled. We're both the oldest yes. of five. We were both homeschooled. And we had very different experiences with it. Yeah, I really love being homeschooled. I thought it was great. Tiffany didn't really like it as much. I didn't like it. I think the big difference was I had friends and community. Tiffany didn't really. Like my siblings um, really liked it because they had stuff. They had like sports teams and stuff that they did. But there was nothing I was really interested in that the homeschool community offered at so that time. So I feel like we're open to it. But I also think it kind of depends on the child and what their interests are. One thing I really want to do is I want to have a year, whether we're homeschooled or do it on a summer, when our kids have like a certain country in this block that we give them like this region they each choose a country and they research it and then they are our tour guides through that country like we go and spend a month in like Europe or South America or wherever and they take us through and like they set up the tours they set up where we stay I think that would be so cool and that could really tie into homeschooling so I don't know we'll see um hardest thing about being a new parent life Sleep. in three hour blocks oh yeah that too yeah, Natalie needs to eat every three or four hours and sometimes sleeps sort of during that time. Our lives revolve around that. Yeah, she's doing a lot better at night. Like last night she slept from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. and then went back to sleep until 9.30. Mm -hmm. So that was great. Um, but yeah, I just am like really tired all the time. Even with that sleep, my body is like, wow, you didn't know how much sleep you needed. Please go back to bed for 20 more hours right now. So that's by far the hardest part. Also the anxiety. I um, struggle with anxiety as it is, and now that I'm a new mom, I've never had to trust God so much in my life to like keep my baby alive. Because like when she would go to sleep at night, it was really hard for me to go to sleep at night for a while. Because I was like, must stay awake, must make sure she's breathing, must make sure she's okay. And so to let that go so I can rest has been mm. a learning curve. So we had a bunch of questions about how do you balance parenting and your spouse or like, um, what about the romance post baby? What about sex post baby? A lot of people Intimacy ask about baby. romance and yes. sex. So, let's talk. You know, it was interesting. Some of our friends told us, yeah, intimacy changes um, after you have a baby. And I thought, oh no, no sex. Yeah. Um, but really, we're so tired. And you know, I, I personally feel like, like a good sexual experience involves like time and energy. And yeah. we just... Neither of us are as interested in that as we used to be before the baby. Having sex well, is Well, we do me. have sex. It's not as oh, often yeah. as we used to. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But having a baby together and taking care of her together right. is like a really amazing bonding experience. So yeah. I feel like on an, on an intimate level, like true intimacy, I feel like we're, we're very intimate. I feel like we just try to help the other person feel pursued and we talk about it regularly to be like, mm. are you getting what you need? and how can I help you feel loved, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think those are the important things. And so like mm -hmm. the amount of sex you have each week changes at different seasons of life, but like your intimacy can keep growing, like mm -hmm. you were saying. A fun question that has nothing to do with babies is thoughts on gap years. Go for it. James I took a gap one. year uh, right after college. My brother joined me. He was right out of high school. We traveled in Latin America for about seven months out of the year. It was amazing. I think it's a great life experience. You can volunteer, you can teach, you can do a missions trip. It's just such a, it's a neat experience. I couldn't really wander around South America with a wife and small child, so I was <laughs> glad I did it. If we hadn't named the baby Natalie, what would we have named her? Eliana. Ellie. Yeah. Yeah, we were thinking Eliana, but she looked like an Eliana to you. She didn't look like an Eliana to us. I feel like she looks more like an Eliana now than she did when she was born, but she still looks more like a Natalie. Yeah, I think so. She came out and we're like, yeah, that's not an Ellie baby. We need a different name. So she was without a name for a few days. Mm -hmm. How to overcome anxiety and depression. We got a lot of questions about this, like from a Christian perspective, mental health, anxiety, depression, self-harm, eating disorders. I, I recently got an email from one of you who said, I have an eating disorder and people tell me to just pray harder so that it goes away. And I think that that's one of the great myths about mental health in the Christian world is that 
Yeah, you're agreeing. You're like, preach, mom. If you just pray harder, it'll go away. And sometimes that might work for some people, but I think most of the time it's much deeper and more complex than that. And so um, God uses other people to help you find freedom. So um, for example, finding a counselor or someone you trust mm -hmm. who's a safe person that you can talk with. Yeah, and, and a safe person to talk face to face to. I mean, yeah. Social media, texting is great, but you really, you yeah. need to be in a room with a person. You know, a safe person is someone who's really good at listening. They're not necessarily going to try to solve your problems. They're just going to listen. Because a lot of times, once you can get it out there to someone, you can figure out what to do next. But you, you have to have a safe person to talk to. Yeah. And a few other really important things are, um, honestly, exercise and eating healthy helps a lot with a lot of mental health situations. Mm. Sometimes medicine really helps because mental health is also biological. It's not just a spiritual problem. It's not just mm -hmm. an emotional problem. It's also biological. That's a very deep question. We could say a lot more on that and we'll probably just have to do a video on it at some point. We also got a lot of questions about people being lonely. So we are going to do a video about developing friendships after college because that's really hard to do um, and it's easy to feel lonely. So we're going to do a video on that. But I think one of the things I'd say about loneliness in general is that it's something that comes and goes throughout life. And I think we always think, what do I do to fix this? What do I do to make this go away forever? And I, in my own experience, um, it doesn't go away forever. It kind of comes and goes. James says that it's like hunger. Like mm -hmm. it'll come sometimes and then it'll be gone sometimes. Those lonely seasons have pushed me closer to God and really encouraged me to develop good friendships with people. Yeah, are you feeling lonely? There's no way she's feeling lonely right now. Well, more like people just aren't paying attention to her. Yeah. Or she wants to move. Or she's tired. Who knows? Mm -hmm. She's a baby. <laughs> to, to start to build community is, is so difficult, and I think it's easiest in college and gets more difficult past there. And I think you need to make a regular habit of going different places to meeting people. And then once you've met people, um, then you have to sort of, you have to practice investing in them. I've always found it takes usually at least three months of living in a place and doing the same things, of trying to go out and meet people to really get traction. It takes me like two years usually. And I, I, I'm an extrovert. Yeah. So um, one is how do you deal with the knowledge that anyone can see your laundry up to dry on your YouTube channel, specifically people that know you in person? I thought that was such a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been like a super open book. Like people have thought it was weird. And so I guess YouTube like was just a natural thing for me because it's like, well, I'm already an open book. Like anybody can know a lot of things about me, but I also have like some boundaries in place. And there are certain things that I just don't share. Like if I'm really walking through something in that moment, I'm not going to put that online probably because mm -hmm. I'm only going to have people who I'm really close with speaking into that situation. I don't want a ton of people speaking into it. So I kind of wait until I feel like in my heart that something's ready to share before I share it. At least for me, it was something I had to get more comfortable doing. Yeah. Uh, but I really feel like it's an opportunity that God gives all Christians, not just us, to be honest. Because at least in the sort of the American world that I live in, everyone is all about you know, how they appear and trying yeah. to look as, appear as good as they can. But as Christians, we don't have to worry about that. Like our worth and our identity is that Jesus has saved us. And mm -hmm. it's fine to share how broken we are because we're, we're broken people, mm -hmm. but we have a savior who is making us whole. And that's really exciting. And I think sharing about the brokenness and then also the wholeness is what God has put each of us here to do. Mm, I like that. That's so good. So another question that we got a bunch was, how has your relationship with God changed since having a baby? I keep asking him for advice. I'm like, God, what do I do in this situation? God, I have no idea. I keep praying like, God, would you parent me as I learn how to parent my child and just like mm -hmm. teach me how to do that? And so I feel like he'll give us wisdom in different situations. Mm -hmm. And there are days when I don't have any formal time with God. It's just like a conversation throughout the day. And then, you know, whenever I can, I try to have, it's usually like, five to 10 minutes of praying and reading my Bible. And I just try to be honest and just try to recenter my heart on him. And that helps a lot. Yeah, I, I, I feel like um, a very, very similar. I haven't been able to have as much formal time with God um, just because a lot of times I'll help with the baby right until I, up until I need to go to work. Um, he's the best husband. But he seriously changes like 100% of the diapers when hey. he's home. It's amazing. Hey. He's so sweet. But yeah, I, I totally echo just talking to God throughout the day. And uh, it's been, it's really neat for me to see 
Like, we'll do things to help Natalie. Like, we'll cover her eyes when we're putting something over her head to get her dressed. Or we'll bend her neck back to wipe out off her jewel rash. And she'll get angry and fearful because she doesn't know what's going on. She can't understand that, like, yeah. what we're doing is to help her. And I feel like that's such a picture of sometimes God does things. We're like, God, why would you do this to me? I didn't want to move. I didn't want to lose that friendship. And, yeah. you know, in, in so many ways, God is sort of making us whole and making us more mature. Sure. And something will seem like uncomfortable or painful and we don't realize that mm -hmm. it's actually to help us in the long run. The funniest question we got, and this is one that we want all of your input on because 80% yes. like, of my viewers are women. So um, to the men watching, this one's for you. Robert asks, how should you text a Christian woman that you're interested in dating? I hate texting or messaging and would honestly rather just call them. <laughs> Girls, comment. <laughs> I think every guy feels this way. Wait, why can't you just call the girl? Do you like to be called? Well, no. Exactly. That's true. But like, I, I don't know if it was a guy who was interested. I think I'd be open. I just have like, long conversations on the phone. You prefer texting. I do prefer texting. It's true. Try to be natural in your texts. Don't try to text about nothing. You're not going to be good at it. But if you have <laughs> something to say, say it and try to respond back promptly. And um, do what you can to set up an in-person meeting because, <laughs> like I said, texting is, is a playing field you're never going to win. I mean, I think the, the Tiffany text to James text ratio is, I don't know, 10 to 1? Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least. <laughs> I've gotten used to him just yeah. not My thumbs just up. don't move that fast. <laughs> yeah, Natalie, you've done so well. Good job, baby. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for those amazing questions. We're so excited to be back with weekly videos, and you'll probably see this girl co-starring in many of them. Mm -hmm. Now she needs to go to sleep. Take okay. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.